Okay, so uh, second video of the uh, TR8. We're going to call it TR8 now, not a 7 slash 8. Um, the engine's now being removed, so we've got Chocolate Steve with us here um, removing the engine. And Handsome Steve is back with us behind the camera, so better videos today. Um, but before we start, I thought we'd better explain these names. So, um, Chocolate Steve, what, what's that in your top there? Yeah, tea break. Ah, okay. Um, You've got a couple of special drawers in your toolbox, do, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, must not touch. Okay, um, so the reason Steve, Workshop Steve, is called Chocolate Steve is because there's a couple of dedicated drawers in his toolbox to, um, well, sweeties. But why is he called Handsome Steve? Um, I think you better take this one, hadn't you, Steve? Okay, so uh, here we're both Steves. I'm uh, just going to show you a few things as we, as we actually discover them here, removing the engine. So first thing we've discovered is the breather pipe here, which goes through into the air cleaner to scavenge any crate case pressure. Um, hasn't really been fitted properly. You can see it's been working its way through the rubber here, so little bits of rubber will be uh, uh, getting in through to the engine. Um, been chafing because it's just been fitted for an open hole in the air cleaner here. When we supply our Weber kits out, we actually supply the correct fitment that goes onto these preformed areas here, which you drill out and the pipe can then clamp onto them. Uh, we obviously also do our power plenum as well, which increases the abil engine's ability to scavenge from the crankcase. So um, yeah, just thought we'd show you that. And now we can remove the carburetor. Um, as you know, we're doing away with this carburetor because uh, we can get far better road tune on the Weber carb. And this is the Offenhauser 360 intake, which again, we don't use because effectively it's a drag racing intake manifold because it's open port. And here is the intake manifold will be fitting. It's the Offenhauser dual port. The difference being your primaries of the carburetor are here and the secondaries of the carburetor are here. So pretty much the entire time you're driving on the road, you're on your primaries. Now with this intake manifold, the primaries are here. It's open port, one huge port all the way through to each um, intake valve. With this intake manifold, we're actually split. So if you can roll that over, Steve, please. You can see we've got two ports to each intake valve, which is obviously why it's called the dual port. The ideal thing with this is at low RPM, on light throttle, on cruise, you're only using half the port size. So the velocity of the air is far greater, which really helps suspend those atomized fuel particles, keeps everything mixed nicely, so you get a much better burn, much better efficiency out of the air and fuel mixture. Whereas with this, for wide open throttle drag racing and, and things like that, yeah, no problem, as much air and fuel in as you can get, but for everyday road use, even track use and things like that, this is the carb uh, the intake manifold to always go for. So, uh, right, pull the engine now then. Okay, so Steve's been working his magic, had a nice productive few hours. Uh, the intake manifold's now off, the ancillaries and front end system, uh, timing cover and everything off the engine as well. It's allow us to do a little bit of uh, inspection on, on what's uh, actually been built up, what we've got here. So we've noticed we've got a mismatch of 1971 and 1975 very early style rockers, which we can tell by the date stamp on them here. Uh, they've actually got a smaller pad that sits on top of the valve, um, not the style of rocker we use. We use later style genuine rockers. Uh, we can also tell that tapper preload hasn't been set, there's no shims under there. Um, chances are they should have used some shims because the heads will have undoubtedly been skimmed if they'd done the job properly. Um, so the block is an early block, pre-82. So SD1 block, uh, you can tell obviously we've got smaller webbing uh, across the valley here. And um, yeah, I think it's about ready to be pulled out now. So the job's going really, really nicely. Are you happy so far? I'm happy. Excellent. Right, well, um, yeah, I reckon, yeah, I'll start. Thank you very much. It's time for one of them, I think, isn't it? Yeah, Steve. Well, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So what's next? Just a couple of bell housing bolts. A couple of bell housing bolts, engine mounts, support the gearbox. And, uh, nice video of it coming out. Come. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent management decision you made here. Very good. Okay, so um, I'm guessing this means we're ready to, ready to come, come out. out. Um, am I just supervising? Or? Yeah, if you do, just do a little bit of manual labour. Oh, up and down. Up and down, take okay. it. Right, so, Flora, are you ready? Right, you both come up just a little bit. Okay. Oh, that's good. Right, that's yeah. Why don't you stay there? Ian, if you come up, please. Floyd, you just want to watch the side, please, mate. Nice and steady. Into the front of the crank. Right, stop there, let's rotate. Right, 
energy pipes, please. Excellent. All good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on here. Let's get steady. Yep, yeah, we'll clear that. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, one engine removed. So now we'll um, thoroughly inspect the engine bay, see if there's anything that needs touching up, which we can see on the cross member here, there, the subframe here there is. And uh, yeah, Holly can now build an engine up for this. Excellent, good day's work. More chocolate. More chocolate? Probably ought to be more <laughs> chocolate, didn't it? Yeah, why not? Okay, so uh, Steve's just pointed out to us, he was just in about to uh, fit this engine up to an engine stand. And uh, in a previous life, this engine has had some severe damage to the rear of the uh, casting hoe on the block, pretty much all the way around. So our suspicion is that originally this was fitted to an auto box and torque converter bolts or something managed to fly out and, um, yeah, create a bit of a mess. Obviously it hasn't happened this time round and uh, we believe it wasn't a manual one because all the bolts and everything would have been facing the gearbox. So uh, just thought we'd share that little piece of... Uh, well, that little finding with you certainly made a mess. <laughs>